Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This is Pete Brizio with AquaFX, another edition of AquaFX.net. Uh, today we're going to be doing an installation of our Dolphin reverse osmosis system and a quick explanation about our Dolphin reverse osmosis system with booster pump mounted. Uh, sometimes you're going to need the additional pressure if you're in a low pressure situation such as a well system or you just have low city pressure. Um, we'll discuss some of the differences with these as we move along the video. So the first thing I like to do with pretty much any RO system is go ahead and install the RO membrane. RO membranes are manufactured with a preservative on them, so they're kept sealed from the date of manufacturing all the way till you install. So if you notice, there's a quick connect fitting that's holding my cap of the RO membrane housing on. I'll go ahead and just disconnect that for convenience. I now counterclockwise screw off the cap and you'll notice there's a little O-ring. Just make sure he stays in place. I now just go ahead and open up this RO membrane. And you'll notice the RO membrane has a black brine seal. This is to stay on the membrane. It also has two permeate O-rings that will be inserted first into the housing. So again, there's no need to modify the membrane as you take it out of the plastic. Just go ahead and install as is. So double O-ring first. I will slide it into the RO housing and you'll feel the brine seal start to catch. Kind of just push it in a little bit. You notice it doesn't take much strength. And now I've, I've see, I felt the uh, permeate o-ring seat into the membrane housing. I know that it's seated and I'll go ahead and just screw the cap back on. As the cap is in its original position again, I'll go ahead and take that tube that I disconnected and I'm going to reinsert it into the quick connect fitting simply by just pushing with a little bit of force and you'll feel it snap past the o-rings. At this point that quick connect fitting is good and ready to receive pressure. And I'm going to go ahead and take my feed tubing, which will be my black tube here, similar as the other quick connect fitting. I'm just going to go ahead and take the tube and shove it into the inlet on the RO system. Now the inlet can be identified by the white cotton sediment filter um, on the first stage. I'm going to take the other end of my feed connection and just hook that into the quick connect fitting. I now have only one open port on my Dolphin RO system. That is where my good permeator product water will come from. I'll just go ahead and take the blue tube and attach that there. This blue product line can go to a storage container, uh, any sort of area where you're holding the water, and just make sure that it's a food grade safe container if you're using plastics. I'm now going to go ahead and connect this to my water supply so we can do some quick startup checks to make sure the unit is operating properly. Threading on my three quarter inch hose bib adapter onto my garden hose spigot. I just go ahead and tighten it until I feel the o-ring and that should be good to go. I check my quick connect by giving it a little tug. I'm going to make sure that I'm allowing my unit to drain somewhere where it can drain freely. Um, you don't want your drain water to be put anywhere where it might overfill a container or anything like that. Uh, a lot of folks ask, is there anything they can do with the drain water? And honestly, if you're using city water, you have concentrate fluoride in here. You can't do things like drink it or give it to plants or pets. Um, you can do things like irrigate a garden that you don't care that much about or even divert the water to a swimming pool. All right, I've now successfully uh, diverted my wastewater somewhere where it can drain freely, not filling up a bucket that could possibly overflow. Uh, I've got my RO product water that's gonna go into my clear canister here. We're gonna measure the TDS that comes out of the membrane at first and after a couple of minutes so that we can see a difference of the two. Um, and we're also gonna check the pressure on the unit. And one of the things I would like to highlight in this video was the pump mounted dolphin and whether or not the pump is a necessity for your application. And we're gonna go into that in just a second. So, now that I've got my water supply slowly filling up my first canister, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that there aren't any leaks. Looks like my first stage is filling up nicely and the water should continue into the second stage, our carbon block. And you can see water slowly filling up our second stage. And again, I'm going to take the same measure just to make sure that no water spills out from the lid, possibly due to any uh, things getting loose during shipping. One thing I'd like to pay attention to is the pressure that's slowly building on my gauge. For any RO system to work properly, you're going to need at least 40 PSI, but the more pressure the better. Now there is a maximum pressure rating of 80 PSI that we don't recommend you exceed. 
So I can see now that my gauge has slowly gone up to about 45 pounds per square inch. So I've got enough pressure to make our water and uh, the TDS that it rejects should be ideal. So let's uh, give the unit maybe a minute or two just for the water to permeate through the membrane and then we should see some product water come out of our uh, blue RO product tube. We can see here the first makings of our RO water. Now our unit's rated for 100 gallons per day, so this is about four gallons an hour. So a nice slow but steady stream is exactly what we would like to see. I'm gonna grab one of my handheld TDS meters and just go ahead and start measuring some TDS values. Initially, the TDS that we see off the membrane is gonna be not the best because the preservative is slowly rinsing itself off the RO membrane. Here at the shop, I've got a tap water TDS of about 160 parts per million. And here we can see that my initial TDS is actually not even that bad. It's about 13 parts per million. Again, I do expect that there's some rinse happening of the RO membrane. We're going to give it just a couple of seconds and we're going to compare our value. Whenever taking TDS readings, it's always a good idea to take your measurement device and rinse it out two or three times with the water that you're trying to measure. This will eliminate any sort of inaccurate readings. Near 30 seconds later, we can see that the value is very steadily dropping and we have a value now of about eight parts per million, which is phenomenal. Um, I would recommend letting the membrane maybe rinse for a minute or two longer, but a value of eight parts per million is certainly acceptable for the 160 parts per million that we started off with, well over 90% rejection. One finer point of this video that I really wanted to talk about was the pressure that you're operating at at home. Sometimes folks will have less than 40 PSI, in which case a pump becomes necessary. For that, we have our great pump-mounted Dolphin RO system. This Dolphin RO system integrates a booster pump, our own AquaFX brand booster pump, a high-pressure switch that will automate the unit, as well as an automatic shutoff that will stop the drain water when the unit is full. So not only does your product stop, but your wastewater stops, everything just comes to an idle standstill until the float valve drops or the unit needs to resume production, at which point the pump will turn back on, the unit will continue to make wastewater and do its own thing all by itself. Now you may be asking yourself, which unit is more appropriate, the traditional Dolphin or the Dolphin with the booster pump mounted? What we like you to do is make the most appropriate selection. So what we will do is if you order a pressure gauge kit from us, we'll send you one in the mail, and then we will give you a credit for the pressure gauge kit once you know which unit is needed for your application. We don't want to have you spending money unnecessarily and possibly overpressurizing the unit, but we also don't want to have you underproducing or creating water inefficiently. So for that, I would definitely recommend the pressure gauge kit just to see what uh, pressure your household or facility is at. As previously mentioned, the booster pump mounted Dolphin is, does come 100% ready for automation. So all that you're gonna have to do is connect the high pressure switch that controls the pump to the unit to a float valve or even an external cutoff such as a quick connect ball valve like we were using on our Dolphin install. An another notable feature about this Dolphin, aside from the aluminum bracket, is the liquid-filled pressure gauge. This will come with a glycerin-filled gauge so that as your pump is making pressures higher, you're not going to have to guess where your pressure is at because the gauge is dancing all over the place. The liquid-filled gauge, the automatic shutoff, high-pressure switch, and booster pump really make this an all-inclusive unit when necessary. Thank you again for joining us, guys. This has been a quick explanation of the installation of a Dolphin RO system and a little bit of background about a Dolphin with booster pump mounted. If you have any questions, please visit our website, aquafx.net, or give us a call at 877-256-3467. Thanks, guys. Happy reefing.